brief conversation with all of you uh, three days ago about the uh, Medellin and the strong culture in printmaking that is, uh, is, is there. So I like to learn, we all like to learn a little bit more about the history with the starting point of the 70s, because we don't want to go back to colonial times, but the starting point in the 70s, if you can talk about um, a little bit more of the makers, the influencers, and the print shop that started during that time. And I like to hear, because it's two different generations, I like to hear from all of you, starting with Diego. Diego, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Yes. What do you want? Yes, I, I like uh, you to give us a little background. I know during the 80s, you got a scholarship to go to Europe to study printmaking. So if you can elaborate on that and what was your experience and what you brought back to your community of printmakers in Medellin, I'd like to hear from you. Uh, yes, uh, that was the, the travel of my life to come to Spain to begin uh, my travel in, in Madrid. I began to study there uh, printmaking in the Complutense. Then I have uh, that uh, scholarship. With that money, I, I came back to Mallorca and begin my professional life here in, in the island. And in contact with some galleries that I am meeting in Arco, Madrid. Then I, I have uh, about uh, 20 or more years here in Spain. Oh, wow. But, yes, but I, uh, I travel to Medellin very often, mostly one year each year. And in the last uh, three years, I, I be in contact with uh, Victoria, and with uh, Juan Ernesto Correa that invited me to, to participate in the, the, the encuentro, the, the engraves in, in Medellin. And I was, was very happy because when I traveled to Medellin, um, I, I, I work and I print in, with uh, some friend there and I have uh, some uh, works to, to show in that, uh, that meeting. So I, I begin to be with you from three years ago, I think. And I am very, very excited to, to be now in New York with you. And I hope that we are very happy in the future with it, uh, these shows. Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you. You were also part of the staff at the University of Medellin, is that correct? Yes, it's before correct. You went, yes. Before yes, you I, went to. Yeah, before, I, I, before that uh, travel, I work in, the, in Medellin in the in Universidad Nacional, sede de Medellin, in the, in the art, in the art school there and in, in the architectural school also. Uh, on, on the beginning, when, in the beginning, when I was studying architecture there, I work in the university. And uh, uh, for me, it's, uh, it's the, the, the most exciting uh, work in my life to, to be in contact with people that I love art, uh, painting, engraving, and, and, and an architecture also. Mm. But uh, here in Spain, I only work uh, in painting professionally. And this is the, the, the way that I get my, my money for, for continuing with my family here. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you have a beautiful uh, work in Dry Point. And I see, when I see your work, I, I, it reminds me of Goya. So I... <laughs> I want you to talk about uh, those works that you have in the show, particularly. Yes, it's a beautiful story. If I 
have some time to, to tell you. Yeah. Well, in the beginning of my practice in, 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 in printing, uh, the, the printmaking for me is ever at the beginning of a new work. Uh, I begin to work uh, in uh, in point, point, Punta Seca. Yeah, dry, dry point. point. Dry, dry, point. point. dry point. Dry point, uh, because it's the, the first and the more elemental. But right now, I uh, continue working in that. When I was in, in Medellin, in that uh, meeting in, in, with some friends, we have a model and working directly, uh, dry pointing dry with, point, the yes. it, with the model, you know, uh, there are no, no, no time to, to make hair on the, uh, nothing like this. And uh, we uh, work very, very quickly. So in very few days, I have a lot of... Uh, uh, oh. sí. uh, well, I have a, a lot of, uh, of plates in, in that way. And uh, sometimes I think uh, to, to be together in one way when printing one over, over, over and over. And in that, uh, in that work that you have in, in your gallery right now, uh, you can see one image, but it's, uh, it's some five, for example, five plates for the calaveras and two plates for the another work. This is the, for me, it's a, it's a new, new, new way to work. It's beautiful. It's just the lines. It just tells the story behind it. It's just amazing. And uh, yeah. next, I'd like to hear from Victoria because she was abroad for 30 years and she was teaching and she dedicated her life to teaching. And I'd like to hear from your experience in Europe as well. Great. I am very grateful for all of you to, that have opened the door for us. I uh, have been very interested to hear our experience. I became involved with printmaking when I went to study graphic design in London. And then since then, I fell in love with printmaking. It was like a drug for me. I did two postgraduates degrees in a Slade School University College and the other one in the Central San Martins. And also I have taught as a teaching assistant in Slade, afterwards in Portugal and also in between in Santa Barbara, California in UCSB. Also when I used to come back to Colombia I used to be teaching in the universities, in the Bolivariana, Los Andes University, and uh, Antioquia University. But it was more graphic design and a uh, book artist, nothing to do with printmaking. When I decided to return to Colombia, uh, I did some connection with Felix to be able to arrange the encuentro with printmakers because I knew and I experienced we have the doors closed for many years. We are very much behind. Uh, they don't look at our work. They don't open door for us, the art world with the encuentros, the two encuentros that we have done with this second one that we have to do it through Instagram and Facebook, we have more uh, response from the journalists, from people interested in art, 
and also a lot of artists. It was a surprise for us to find out around 120 artists participate in the second one. Uh, we really want to keep doing it. Like I said to Felix, I have put behind my own work doing this because really I want to help the students, the artists that are isolated working in their own space. When I used to teach in Portugal, that it was the last time that I taught, I combined printmaking with fine art and graphic designer and ceramic students. I have all those students with me. And the good thing was that the teacher is not far away from the student. We have to produce our work at the same time that they are producing their work. And it was good because we learn from each other. And I wanted to do this in Medellin, but I couldn't. They didn't open the door for me to do this, but I am not giving up. I decided to come to live in the countryside because I was very disappointed with the art world. But I said, I, I cannot be buried myself. I want to give and to help the young generation. That's the reason that I am here, yeah. That's fabulous, that's, that's great. Um, and also I'd like to hear from Jorge because he's also teaching at the uh, University of Antokia and I'd like to hear from him as well. Jorge, is he Jorge. here? Hi, Jorge. I have my, <laughs> I have my, my microphone silent. Okay. Um, th uh, hello, and thank you for uh, thank you everyone for being here. Mm, as Luanda said, I'm, I work at the University of Antioquia, and um, well, the, actually, it's a it's a very um, interesting uh, experience. I, I get I have I have the chance to work in a private workshop, which is La Stampa, and um, and at the university, and they, they, they're both different. Um, um, I have different uh, kind of students, I guess. Male and Anna work with me at La Stampa. And um, well, it's, um, uh, I, I was, I, I, I studied at, at the, uni the University of Antioquia. So somehow I've, I, I, I got into printmaking because I love the processes. I love the, all the, um, chemistry and all the machinery that's around the process. And uh, also because it's a, it's a very different way of approaching the image and um, of producing art. And I, I was into it from the, right from the, from the start, from when the first time I visited workshop, I, I got in love with printmaking. So somehow I've been trying to replicate that, that same feeling that the, like, trying to uncover all the secrets and all the, um, the, the intricacies around the processes and um, like uh, lending them to, to others. I, I want more people to, to learn what I like, uh, what I like about printmaking. And um, well, it's, uh, it's, a, it, it's, I think that teaching, it's also uh, like Victoria said, it's like a, a double way, um, 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 a strategy of, of learning. I mean, I'm, I'm teaching, but at the same time, I'm learning a lot from my students. And uh, well, it's a, it's very, very, it's a very interesting, and I, I think it's very um, uh, rewarding process. Yes, yes, you can you can get richness from other people's work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's why That's teaching right. is so important. The interaction and and you know, pre-making is all about working together. So it's, you know, it's, it's just it's just the perfect medium for that. So, you know, and your contribution for, you know, to keep making a life in Medellin is that, the fact that you're putting all your love and your time and your uh -huh. effort to, to, that, to that practice. And then it's, you know, it's, it's rewarding to, to see that. Um, Anna had um, a very beautiful um, etchings in the show and you know I'm very inspired by looking at her work because I love etching 
It's just, it's just one of the things that I that I've been doing for the last twenty years. Um, I also noticed by looking at her work and resume that she had uh, done paper making workshops. So Anna, I'd like to hear from you from your pre making experience. Anything you'd like to share tonight? Well, um, I came to to printmaking through um, a drawing workshop that was held at La Stampa when I started. And there was something just so organic about the way it, it worked. It's uh, in the sense that you, you can mix and match and experiment and, and just uh, have different techniques that can make you go out of your comfort zone. It's uh, people who know me know that I talk about going out of your comfort zone. And it's not that easy for me because I'm a very, uh, I tend to try to be very precise in my work, which I guess that's why I tend towards uh, etchings, which require a certain uh, amount of, uh, uh, of detail work. Um, but the thing is that uh, printing has something that drawing doesn't have. You are, to a certain extent, you're in control of a drawing. You know what you're going to get. Nick. In uh, printmaking, it's kind of like Forrest Gump. You don't really don't know what you're going to get at the end because until you print and even then you really don't know if it's going to be repeated because it's just uh, so many different variables that go in the process. I mean, the way that you uh, clean, clean the plate when you were printing and so forth. I remember a few years back, I saw a retrospective by Louis Bourgeois and uh, she, there were these really huge words in printmaking that she did towards the end of her life. It was the same plate, but all the works were different because she played around with that. It was just, uh, it was just eye-opening to see how playful you could be with uh, with printmaking. And there's just so many options. I mean, I've been printing for what now? Uh, something like 12 years now. And there's still so many techniques I've yet to explore. This year, actually last year, I started working with lino linoleum, which was my, pretty much my first time. I had done some, which I really didn't like a few years back. And it was just a whole reordering of your, Way, of the way your brain thinks about the image. It's just so many ways you can challenge yourself. So it's just, uh, I guess it's just so for uh, so many possibilities. It's, uh, and what you said about being a, a, um, a group initiative, it is so much more because everybody has there are different tricks and stories and techniques and so forth. And when you come together, you share those. Oh, for example, the um, one of those prints, the the uh, playing in the woods, is done with um, um, agua agua tinta, agua tint. Aqua tint. Yeah, but it's not. Uh, but the reserve, the resist, is done with eyeliner. So that's why it's got that kind of crumbly uh, texture. And that's something that I learned with someone who was at the print shop who uh, by, who, by uh, himself, well, he didn't learn. He learned it from Angela Restrepo, who is also one of the founding, uh, founding members of La Stampa. So it's all this whole um, compending of knowledge that comes together and everybody takes it what what's good for them what what works for them yes and turns it into something different it's it's a beautiful process 
Yes, yes. I remember when I was at the uh, printmaking workshop uh, back in 1997, looking at the work of a Peruvian artist, Claudio Juarez, and he had this very fine, he was an etcher. He had these very fine lines and all like, you know, the spaces in between lines. How do you do that? I have no patience to use my etching needle to go line by line. And it was an aqua tint and it was beautiful. And he said to me, I'm going to give you the secret. You know, the comb that you use to comb your hair? When I use, when I put the aqua tint on the plate, I use that comb. And those are my lines. You know, that's, that's what you get from working together with all the people. You know, I will spend hours, weeks, months, trying to do those lines. Look how that's simple, in, in which way he just solved that problem. So that's what I said. I cannot imagine myself, like right now I'm at home and I have a printing press. I miss the print shop so much because I miss the sense of community in the exchanging ideas and you know, oh, this, ha this accident happened. And you know, when you see the work, oh my God, it's like a miracle. I have passion for printmaking. That's what I'm here tonight. And when Gail called me in the last minute, I said, I'm gonna take my family to the Bronx. I'm gonna see the show and I'm gonna make this happen because anything that has to be with printmaking, I just love to support that idea. And I love to be with you guys tonight. And I love to hear all your stories. And you know, I look forward for many collaborations. You know. With the pandemic, with no pandemic, we find a way because we love what we do. And that's the big difference. Next, I, I love to hear from Male from her experience in Cuba and any other experience that she had throughout her career. Male, I love your work. I love your story. Your sales screen are beautiful, just like watercolor and now it's your turn to talk. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for that trick with the comb. I'm going to use it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am a graphic designer. And after graduating, I took a painting course. And then I decided to be an artist. I said, I'm going to give up my job. I used to be a teacher and a graphic designer. And I said, I want to be an artist. But I have to study. So I found a teacher, a professor, a very good artist. He's from uh, Dominican Republic. He, no, sorry, Republic, a um, Puerto Rican artist whose name is Antonio Martorell. He was giving a workshop, a course in Cuba. So I packed and went to Cuba to study. He's a calligrapher. He's a printmaker, he's an actor, he's, has a, he's a very rich man, uh, full of skills. So I took a course in the museum in La Habana, who was just restored, and I found printmaking and I fell in love with that. I found in La Habana a workshop, a printmaking workshop in every corner. I was so surprised. We just walk away in La Habana streets and you find a small door and you enter and you find a workshop and they use very, very poor resources, poor papers. They have to make up his, their inks but make wow. beautiful pieces of work. So I discovered that uh, you don't have to have very rich materials and tools. You just have to uh, grab your skill and express what you want to express. So I came back to Colombia and found La Estampa, the workshop, and I've been working there for many, many years. Uh, and about the pieces I have in BRAC, they are about uh, my condition of having a twin sister. I'm a, I have a twin brother. 
Really? Yes. <laughs> oh, very nice. <laughs> Such an experience. And I use the technique of silk screen, silk screen, because by that time I didn't have a printing press. And also because I ha I want, I like the surprise. When I paint with a, uh, ink on the silk, and then you spread the medium to transfer the image to the paper, it's always a surprise. So that's why I like that technique because you are not in control. That's true, it's, it's beautiful. It's just that I see it like, wow, it doesn't even look like a silk screen. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just amazing. Yeah, it's your sister and artist as well or not, nothing related? Because my, my twin brother, <laughs> nothing to do with art. No, she's the opposite. I think we are complementary. She's not an artist. She's very intellectual, very rational. Uh, she can't draw. Uh, but the piece I have in black, the gold and silver one, talks about it. Uh, it's human to compare. When you see very close two similar things or people, it's inevitable. You compare. So we have been always compared. Ah, you're the pretty one, you're the ugly one. You're the tall one, you're the small <laughs> one. And we are very, very small. And yeah. then one centimeter, but yeah. people compare. So that piece, the gold and leaf one and silver one, uh, talk about it. Uh, the, uh, everyone is being compared. And, and also, when you don't have a twin sister or brother, human beings have two sides the side that you show and the side that you hide. So that's why I express in that with the gold and the silver and they are in the wrong way, in, in the wrong place. I wrote the word oro, gold, on the silvery place because yeah. who is who? What's good and what's bad? That's great. What uh, I, I know that you guys started the initiative of uh, Encuentos back in 2018, correct? Uh, and that was from Felix. Before that, it was any other initiative to kind of bring the community together uh, by any institution or by you as individuals in the city of Medellin? Yes, we had a big fair. Uh, it was called Art Med, uh, and it has a pavilion uh, dedicated to printmaking, and it was a huge success. But the, it was the first art fair made in Medellin, and there was only one. It couldn't continue. That's why Felix Angel uh, thought about the Encuentro, because there was not going to be more fairs. Uh, in that's where that was the initiative for the Encuentro. That's nice. Uh, right now, because of the pandemic, at least us here, I, I belong to two print shops. We are doing a lot of artist talk online and also offering classes online. So I, I went to your Facebook page and you guys are also trying to educate the people and and trying to keep that community alive, to, to keep on going with the project of the printmaking. Can you talk about uh, what's, what's next for you all? Because you know, right now the situation, what, what are your plans? What are your, your projects that you're working on? Uh, can I say something sure. about that? Okay, uh, we have a meeting with the uh, committee a few weeks ago, a few days ago. We are planning for this year to have like a competition for the printmakers. Uh, we are going to, uh, Felix is going to donate the prizes, three prizes, because we want to keep alive the printmaking uh, light. You, uh, we, are, we don't want to disappear. We want to have that. And also in a small town, beautiful town, called Jericho. Uh, we are going to have a show as well. The people who, that we are going to select, 
that they will show their work in Jericho. And also we are uh, in the middle of the, this year, we have to start to organize the next encuentro. It will be the third encuentro. That's the thing that we have at the moment. And also we talk during the last meeting with the committee that allow the students to use the printmakers workshops that they are around because the universities that they are closed. And we are having announced that to the students or to the artists, but that's what we have in mind at the moment. And probably Male and Jorge, that they are part of the committee, they can't talk more about things that I cannot remember at this moment. I give them the, the words for them to talk. Did you get a lot of support uh, on the first encuentros in, in the city of Medellin? People gathered together. What was the reaction of the community? And yes, we're, you, we're, oh, yeah, sorry. Jorge, yes. All right, we, we're, we're kind of up around the, the, the events around the, the Encuentro, it's like um, somehow testing how's, how's the art environment, how, 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 receptive, how receptive it is to printmaking. And well, we, we have found some difficulties. There are like a certain, uh, you know, it's, there are certain pre prejudice around the printmaking as, as it being a minor art. And, uh, but um, there, there are many things going on and, and, and there are many people working, but they're having different approaches to printmaking. I'm pretty sure that in no, not, not a long time, we're, we're gonna get some more attention from those institutions. So, so somehow what we pretend with the, with the Encuentro and with the, the, the following events that, that, are going to, that are going to occur, like the, the next uh, pres presential Encuentro, which is going to be in 2022, um, it's a, it's pro probably it's going to be focused on that. It's like finding out what what people are doing with with their in their workshops. And um, well, uh, Victoria said that due to to the pandemic, we uh, uh, all those that have uh, their presses that um, they have their workshops working might open their space to to students from the university who actually don't have the chance to. To use the 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 academic um, installations to to produce their work, so uh, that, and I think that's going to um, make a, um, richer the environment. I get people is going to find out better uh, how how they're working and where they're working, and and uh, the other the other thing that it's very important around the the encuentro. It's like the what what you said, Blanda. It's uh, we have a huge interest in, in um, letting people outside the art world and understand printmaking and, and appreciate it and, uh, and, 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 and make it better. I, I like uh, have better quality on, on their prints and their, on the results. And, um, and, I, and I guess it's, um, it's, it's that I, I, it's, well, it's more than that, but, but somehow it's kind of what we pretend with the, with the encounters. Yeah, part of the uh, the enriching the communities is, is, is educating them, and you know that's the only way that you can engage and, and have more like the new generations of, of you know artists to support printmaking, and you yeah. know this, you guys are already with Encuentros. I think this is is a very good uh, project to start and and you to keep going and you know sure. to to and how much support are you getting from the museums and institutions? in this project, are, are they or galleries, are they really supporting the project or are you having a hard time? Do you think that it has happened in a, a big impact because of the Encuentro project right now in Medellin? Well, it's- Coming together. Vale, you want to talk about that? Because <laughs> you can if you want. <laughs> no, you, you do, you do. Well, it's, it's sad to say, Luanda, but uh, we didn't find too much support. The institutions uh, didn't uh, trust and didn't more many artists by the first encuentro uh, thought it wasn't going to work 
and the journalist, the specialized me uh, media didn't publish about the Encuentro. And also the city, it was very difficult to find a place where to install the Encuentro because it, the first Encuentro was like a opener fair. Well, it was difficult, but I think we are building a community. The most important uh, uh, thing we learned uh, by the first Encuentro is that all the printmakers, we all are colleagues and we became friends. So I think it's the starting point to come together and start building. And as you said, it's very important to educate the people. You can't appreciate what you don't know or what you don't understand. So it's our aim to educate people and get to know what printmaking is. And I think we are going to, to, to find the way because we are now a community and it's better to if we are a group of colleagues. Yeah, definitely. That's, Rwanda, yeah. can I uh, say something about <laughs> the, the first encuentro? It was great. Even if we have very difficult to find a place but the place that we got to was great. It was by the river, beautiful uh, location and beautiful place. And it was a surprise to see the response of the public, especially children. We have some workshops show, showing them how to print, how to do an etching, how to do a monotype, how to do a series screen. It was fantastic. How to do a print, on your body, uh, with a just with a, a, a rubber or something like that. It was very very good, and also it was fantastic because we met a lot of printmakers that we didn't know that they exist. It was fantastic. It was great, and the second one was going to be much much better because we got a better place, beautiful place, huge place. We have. 120 artists uh, around five universities that they were going to have workshops but because the pandemic we have to do it by instagram and facebook but it was fantastic the thing that we have in mind and we hope by 2022 we can do it also presencial to be able to have workshops people going uh, printing their own things, children as well, uh, giving talk about what is printmaking, the different techniques. That's what we wanted to do as well. Keep doing that. That's great. Anna, if you want to say something about your experience as a, because in the first show you were just a, an artist who came, invited for us, by us. Well, I, I, thought, I thought it was uh, a good opportunity to educate the community. People were very curious uh, about what was printmaking. They didn't know what the process involved. And just being able to explain what it entailed, the whole process behind the images, the, I my feeling was that people came away with a new appreciation of what they were seeing, realizing it was just not some, uh, some industrial process. Uh, I found the people very mm, appreciative of what was being displayed. And it, it was pretty amazing to see that many people here in Medellin that we're also working with uh, printmaking because all the workshops pretty much, there's not that many large workshops. There's a lot of small individual workshops as well. And there was not really a community. We knew some of the other people in the other workshops and so forth, but it was not like, oh my God, there's so many people actually working in this. And 
that sense that there's that you're not alone is uh, something that can be um, very powerful because it's 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 very hard if you're on your own lifeboat trying to get to shore but if if there's so many people that can be rowing together for the same direction i think we could get where we go, want to go much faster yes and i've i've been uh, my my perception there's there's a, a small uh, gallery it had to close down by because of the pandemic but it's since then it's gotten a space in another gallery that dedicates itself to printmaking to print uh, to print works so I think that slowly there's a space that's growing uh, there if we want to take it, if we want to work with it, to put our work out there. Yeah. I think there is an opening, but we do have to work together. Uh, and I think the encuentros are a very good vehicle to do so. It's just the right moment. It's, yeah, we have exactly. to support each other. Yeah. We have to carry on. And if we love what we do, we have to be persistent. And it's like anything in life, you, you have challenge, you have a situation, but we all gonna overcome if we work yeah. together. Exactly. Okay. One voice. Yeah, Rwanda, can I say something? Sure, my dear. Okay. We talk about printmakers from Medellin, but we are from a metropolitan area. There are some, uh, attach uh, municipios like Envigado, Bello, Medellín. Uh, no, I cannot remember. Uh, um, uh, Guarne. Well, there are some muni municipios that they join us and we call Medellín, but it's from another places from the uh, close oh, to okay. the city that I have participated. Hmm. Okay, that's great. How many print shops are in the metropolitan area? I think you mentioned uh, La Stampa. There's any other one? Uh, okay, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I can talk. I I yeah. I, I, I I I don't have the exact number. It's a, but I, I think I have a um, certain satisfaction on that because the number is increasing. There, the, as Anna said, there are individual workshops that are working right now. So like um, established workshops are like four or five right now. And there are also four uh, universities that are teaching, teaching printmaking. And so it's, it's, it's great to see that somehow the, the Encuentro, it's like um, um, letting, letting, letting some light in, in these places and their, 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 their participants, all the people that are, are, are making, uh, Pre-making are working on etching or silk screen. They're they're showing their work, and we're we're finding out how how many people are working in in, the, in their own uh, in their own workshops. So uh, it's a it's 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 good. It's uh it's a, it's very nice to see that 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 number of workshops is in, is increasing and collectives, not just workshops, but people that are getting together to um, meet and work on on a, on line of cut or. Like you know that this this um, very basic processes, but they are producing their works and they are showing them in um, Facebook. And we had the chance for the, the if you visit the, the Facebook page from the Encuentro, you might might like might see um, how many people are working um, with different techniques from um, in, in pre making, and uh, they're working on their, their their participants of different collectives and different workshops. Is the Stampa the oldest of the private print shops in Medellin? Yeah, yeah it is. It started uh, like 40 years ago, more, more, more or less 40 years. The, the story, it's a, it's a little fuzzy, but, uh, the, the, but, the, but it started in, uh, with uh, two architects uh, who were friends with, uh, with um, Felix, uh, with Fernando Mejia and Ricardo Peláez. Uh, Ricardo lives right now in the United States, so he's not he's um, he's 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 not involved with La Stampa anymore. And um, and 
Well, it's uh, they, 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 La Stampa has been like uh, focused mostly on etching, and it's because Ricardo and Luis Fernando, uh, they were they they learned uh, printmaking in Italy. They started with Luis Caminitzer and oh, and then, so those I oh, see. Uh huh. And and it, it, it's been it's been it has been um, going on with their with their their knowledge or the, their experience. And we have replicated that through around this 40 years. Wow, this is it's just fantastic. The, the mm -hmm. whole history of uh, of the uh, you know the uh, making the Medellin, and it's just been wonderful hearing from all of you. And I, I guess now it's time for the open questions because we're almost running out of time. <laughs> it's been great. Um, I turn over to Catherine. Yes. Um, hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. Um, we had a request to re-see the works. So I'm just going to share again um, my presentation that shows every of the artist's works who are participating. So this is uh, Diego Arango's work. Um, it's a dry point, I believe, on Somerset paper. Um, and then we also have Male Correa, which whose work was also talked about today. Um, and this is Silkscreen. Um, and the one on the right also features Gold Leaf, which has the gold and the silver that was talked about and mentioned. Um, and this is Ana Fernandez, who works in the etching and aquatint. Um, the work on the right also has a uh, watercolor, I believe, by hand. <laughs> And then we also have Victoria Ortiz, who works in these beautiful, lovely colored woodcuts. And last but not least, Jorge Rodriguez, who works in colographs and makes monotypes and has these really beautiful um, kind of textural prints. And Diego. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Diego. Um, uh, I hope that I hope that this is all a uh, nice review for everyone and an enticement just to come see our show in person and see everything, um, see all the texture. Um, I cannot stress enough how much these works look completely um, more beautiful in person. I think I. Is there any questions that anyone has for any of the artists? Um, Can I say something about my work? Those oh, sure. pieces that I have over there, they are really quite old. The, the woman selling fruits is a detail for the huge woodcut that I did. And the other one, it was an illustration that I did for a magazine when I used to live in Paris. But I work all the techniques. I work, work with a stone lithograph, etching and copper, on, on copper um, zinc, a silk screen, mono print, wood cuts, and uh, lino cuts. I love to work with all the techniques, with printmaking techniques. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, they can feel free to um, unmute themselves or type in the chat, whichever one, if they have any questions. And it go, I don't know, am I heard? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, this was very interesting to hear everyone from, I have unfortunately not yet been able to go see the show. I, I live a bit far away. I mean, in Manhattan, it's not that far, but it is under the circumstances. Um, but I, since it's been extended, I, I think I will try and come up there on Wednesday and I'm fully vaccinated. So I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat more secure, not quite yet. But anyway, uh, it was very interesting to hear that uh, the idea of artists looking for one another as a community of printmakers. And uh, because it is so different from painters who are notorious for being loners, basically. And uh, at the same time, also, I found Anna's comment, uh, commentary very interesting that uh, printmaking has been too often misunderstood as something that ends up industrial. 
And uh, that may be part of the history because the, um, it used to be that people only could afford prints. They could not afford original paintings. And with the prints, they could travel in travel books. They could see things. They could, um, they could do all kinds of interesting things. Um, I saw, and this is sort of off the top of my head, uh, but since you are involved in this very interesting pro uh, program of Enguento, um, there I saw a very interesting combination of music and etchings, actually. Yo-Yo Ma playing in, um, in I Carceri, which are the 18th century and senior moment, the etcher, the artist right now escapes me. It's an, he's an architect who, uh, in the Carceri in, in, in um, Vicenza, I think, um, they are kind of fantastical uh, dungeons. And Yo-Yo Ma was projected in front of this huge display of the Carceri playing the cello. And it was very interesting, the kind of the impression of the, um, he was responding to the work. And I was wondering, it sounds like uh, some of these uh, images, um, the combination of poetry and the image, not necessarily illustrating one another, but responding to one another could make for very interesting more colla uh, differently collaborative um, events, uh, or especially in small spaces. And I was thinking also, thank Brock. It's very interesting that Brock brought this uh, group from Colombia, and especially, I have to say, it, Medellin, which <laughs> to the common uh, somebody who's never been in Colombia, we. Heard, in America, you hear about Medellin largely through the, the drug trade. Uh, that was the infamous um, public knowledge of Medellin. But it's beautiful what, what all of you from different places uh, brought together. And thank you very much. And thank, thank you, Brack, for, for doing that. And I hope that, unfortunately, the times are so difficult to get live people to see live art. And uh, I love printmaking because it, there's so many different, so many different techniques and you see the hand of the artist in it. And this has always been important to me. And you don't see that in reproductions as reproductions of paintings. You don't see the brush stroke. You don't see the same thing on Zoom. You don't, you don't see just as with the actor, you don't feel the breath, really. But it's beautiful. Thank you. And thank you for the, for the talk. Thank you. Um, thank you. Jorge, for, um, for uh, Beata's um, benefit for our senior moments here, the name of the etcher? Do you hear me? Pianetti. Okay? What? Pianetti. Pianetti. Pianetti, is that? Ah, Pianetti, right. Pianetti. <laughs> Pianetti. Pianetti. He wrote it, he wrote yes, it in yes, the yes. chat, Beata. Yes, yes, um, I've seen your moment. I, I, I... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for helping me out. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, right. can, can, I, can I comment on, on Pierre's um, um, uh, uh, observation? I think it's, I, I, I appreciate what you said. It's a, uh, we, I have to say that uh, Medellin has had a very rough recent history around the drug trading. And we, we, I think that, that um, probably um, what's happening around the arts and what's happening around the culture, and it's a, this is this burgeoning collective uh, art scene that's going. It's a, that, that you, can, you can see that on the, on the um, less, um, how, how the, I don't want to say impoverished, but I can't. I can't figure out the word right now. But like the 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 slums in in Medellin, and there there's a huge um, cultural and art scene work, 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 working around, and it's like people trying to free free themselves from the from the pressure from yeah. from yeah. And the violence due to the 
the, the drug, drug trafficking and all the consequences that has been a huge, huge uh, weight on the city. So some, of, somehow... Yeah, I'm sorry. There's a little bit of a parallel to that uh, with regard to the Bronx, uh, the reputation of the Bronx. Uh, it's the same thing. I've, I've worked in the Bronx for many years before I retired as a teacher. And uh, the children and for the adults, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little... It's a little haven, and it's it's a it brings a positive energy of life, and that's why it's so important. And those yeah, it is. And the art the artists are important for that because they art is life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds trite, but it is. It's it's creative, and it invites the creative juices of those who don't call themselves artists uh, and who don't need to be artists as as but uh, they need to un they need to children especially need to see um, that there is something else and yeah. uh, that's why you, your work is very important that's true yeah. And Gail has been holding up uh, Bronx River Art Center for a significant long time and has brought it really to what it looks like now. And uh, I don't even know, were you able to come to install your work or are you, or was it sent? It was uh, Felix. Felix uh, made it all happen. And, and Dorje uh, brought it to us and with great enthusiasm to get this, uh, mm -hmm. get, give these wonderful works uh, another venue, an opportunity to be seen. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we mm -hmm. were able, but the works actually were, uh, um, Felix has the whole collection. It came in a car <laughs> or hey, Drove it up from D.C. Uh, it was in D.C. with Felix and um, just looking for venues. And um, they connected with us. And of course, I, there was no question. It was a beautiful show. And yes, and printmaking is so important and important to the Bronx River Art Center. One of the first media that the Art Center did. Luanda, were you around yeah, when, when that um, silk screen? I have only two copies of I wish I had thought to bring it here to show, but we have an, a silk screen that was made at the Bronx River Art Center in the 1970s, when the art center started in the mid 1970s. That is um, two um, rough images. They're actually, it's photo silk screen. On one side, there's a ruin of a city. And on the other side, there's a ruin of a city. And, um, and then there are the words, it says, Iraq and the Bronx. And it, it's actually Iraq from the Iraqi Civil War in the 1970s. And it's just this demolition, the city just torn down. And it's, one, it's a print that was made at the art center, at the Bronx River Art Center. You remember that ever, Rwanda, seeing that print? I don't remember seeing that uh, at all when I started in 1999. Okay, so I'll, I'm actually going to send that to everybody because it's an important hit part of the history of the art center and, and also, of course, of the Bronx because, you know, like Beata was saying, the Bronx, you know, carries this burden of this I history. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, a, um, uh, uh, a completely burned out city. You know, the, the Bronx, of course, is 1.5 million people. Um, it's as big as the average city and bigger than many cities in, in the United States. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it, it has this history of being a burned out and destroyed place. And it's been many, many years since then. It's ironically, it's still very, very poor. But but the people, it's interesting, maybe in some ways similar to Medellin, 
uh, the people <laughs> never gave, the people who lived here never gave up on the borough, no matter how, I mean, it was a bombed out, you know, uh, no. place. I was here in the 19, well, I'm born and raised in the Bronx, but I was also working in the Bronx in the 1970s um, as an outreach coordinator um, for the then Bronx Museum. And so my job was to go out and about throughout the borough, um, encouraging people to come to the museum. I would walk on blocks and blocks and blocks of burned out buildings and, and rubble, blocks yeah. and rubble of bricks. That's the picture that oh, I know yeah. has of the Bronx. And it's it's 40 years ago. And, and still, that's what people think of. When, when they hear the word the Bronx. And, and there's so much renewal since then. And particularly, I've been now back in the Bronx since um, 1999. Um, and uh, even over that amount of time, the kind of renewal that has happened and is currently happening is, is amazing. Um, and it's not gentrification, uh, which is also great. Mm -hmm. uh, like the rest of the city has been gentrified. The Bronx is, you know, is being rebuilt from the inside out, more or less. Um, and and uh, the people who live here and who have lived here for decades mm -hmm. you know, are staying um, and rebuilding and have rebuilt. So. Um, you know, I guess the same thing uh, for Medellin. Um, you know, you people, mm, the artists being there and staying there um, to, and recognizing that, that your city, you know, has great, great possibilities is mm so important and then to express it through your art or express the beauty mm. of your city you know even if it's not the subject of the work it's by creating beautiful work you are showing the beauty of your city um yeah i think we're about 10 minutes over um so if anyone has any last minute things that they would like to ask or say um, we're going to bring the event to a close for our, our audience. Um, if there's anything that they would like to um, ask or comment or even just drop something in the chat below, um, feel free. Catherine, um, can, can I thank Felix for bringing our work to Washington first and then second to New York? And the work is going to return to Washington for another show in another gallery. And to all of you, thank you so much for being so kind and for opening the doors to us. We have to be in touch, keep in touch and do something together. Yes. Yes. We have to keep working together, keep remaking our life. Exactly. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes, we've had some comments from Avi Jones and Marlene Andler who said that they really enjoyed the talk. And Marlene is a printmaker that lives um, in Glenside, a suburb just outside of Philadelphia. And they really enjoyed seeing everyone's work here tonight. So thank you all for joining us and for taking the time out of your day to see all this work and to be a part of this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Luanda. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you, Luanda. Thank, 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 thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. We look forward to have you here in Medellin for the next twenty years. That's right. <laughs> thank you. Uh -huh. Good luck to all Bye. of you. Bye. 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 Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.